goddess of death. What were you the god of again? What's good, everyone? It is that time again for another MCU film, another film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, hosting some of the two most popular characters. We got Thor, we got Hulk. You know, I love these movies. These are my most favorite movies in the whole wide universe, and I cannot wait to get into this. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. And is Thor Ragnarok any better than Thor and Thor the Dark World? Well, let's see. My name is Brennan Keith Avery. And this is just my opinion. Ah! <laughs> you know, this is not Mjolnir, but, you know, it'll have to do for now. <laughs> but anyway, I had to do that. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Thor Ragnarok. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help your boy out. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Become one of my subscribers so and get all the content I have to provide. Also, click the bell so you can be notified. And go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. Now, like I said in this intro, I was so excited about this movie. And to be honest with you, it's kind of surprising that I would say I'm excited about it because I was disappointed with the first Thor and Thor The Dark World. Um, they, this is like, this is the 16th, no, this is the 17th movie in the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I do have uh, my collection of films right here, all of them on Blu-ray, and I am very proud of it. I even have uh, Spider-Man uh, Homecoming uh, right here too that I just copped not so long ago. And out of all the MCU films, I'm not going to rank those here now. That, that'll just take too long. I, I can make another video for that. I, I made actually another a video for that two years ago, but that's outdated. I just said it's two years. But um, Thor, the Thor and the Thor Dark World films, they were slightly disappointing to me. They just really did not have the true action um, that I thought, thought Thor, you know, encompassed in the comic books and, you know, animated TV shows and whatnot. Out of the whole MCU, I still think that Iron Man 2 is the worst, followed by Iron Man 3. And then right after that, we have either Thor and Thor of the Dark World. So they're really down there. So, you know, I was just really nervous, like, man, I don't want Thor 3 to just, you know, strike out or whatever. And it just be horrible. And we never get, you know, any more Thor movies because he's a great character. He's a powerful character. He's a dope character, you know, but I, I'm glad to say that the movie is not horrible. You know, I, I, I well, I, I'm, I'm, I'll save my red and twist the end. Don't want to spoil the review, the review for you, man. I'm so excited. I can't even talk. Um, now, this movie is being directed by Taika Waititi. Um, I'm sure you've heard of him before. He did uh, Hunt for the Wilder People and What Do We Do in the Shadows? And I keep hearing people talk about those movies all the time and rave about them of how great they are and just how funny they are and how they're just so excited because, you know, they want to see that comedy brought over into the Thor movie. And, um, you know, I haven't seen those films um, I do plan on seeing them sometime in the future. I don't know when exactly when I will be able to see them. But, you know, everybody's just talking about how great they are. And after actually seeing this movie, Thor Ragnarok, you know, um, it does entice me to want to see the movies. Because, as you probably know, everybody is just talking about how funny this uh, movie is. Um, the review I'm seeing this today, I'm recording this Monday, October 30th, uh, of course, 2017 reviews for this film have already been out since I believe October 19th. That's when the review embargo lifted. And as of right now, as I'm recording this right now, it is a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I am very happy with that rating. It is certified fresh. So, you know, um, you don't, you don't have to worry, uh, right there. Um, but a lot of the things that, uh, people were talking about before I saw that I already saw it was just how funny the movie is. And this movie, just right off the top, this movie is extremely funny. Uh, I was laughing from nearly the beginning all the way up until the very end. And I will give it to Taika Waititi because he was able to do something in the very end, which is combine um, comedy within a serious moment. And that's a very hard thing to do because if you just mess up there, if the tone is off just a little bit, the whole scene can just crash and burn. And fortunately enough, that is not the case uh, with this movie with Thor Ragnarok. 
Now, I will go ahead and say this, guys. The first five minutes of this movie, I absolutely hated it. I I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I thought it was atrocious. I was folding my arms, breathing heavy, just kind of sighing like, OK, th this is just stupid. I, I, I don't like it. I really did not like the first five minutes of this movie. And that's because even though 96 percent of the movie is this hilarious uh, and doesn't ruin the action and whatnot, the first five minutes of this movie, they were just trying to be too funny and the jokes just were not landing. Um, I, I was very frustrated about that. And like a lot of the early reviews, and I didn't check out many because I like to go in things fresh, but there were, you know, a lot of the other critics and fan fans and stuff were just saying that, you know, some of the jokes did not land and they were kind of forced. And I do really feel like the very beginning of this movie, it was forced and it, it, it was just like, I was worried. I was just like, oh my gosh, what was it? Were all the other critics lying? I mean, you know, they said this was a good movie. They said it was funny and I, w I was really worried or whatever. I, I was just really sitting back like this, like, okay, um, when is this going to be over? I want it to get good. But, you know, rest assured that is only the first five minutes because after that, things do pick up and it's just taken to another level and like I'm really enjoying it. It was fun. And I like, I like, I like when I see in the comment section and these forums and whatnot, it seems like people are turned off by the, uh, by the word fun. I don't understand that. I mean, the movie is fun and they kind of, I guess it kind of scares people because they don't feel like there is enough action in this movie. And no guys, like I said, rest assured, there is enough action in this movie earlier when I was talking about and Thor and Thor, the dark world, how those movies really just didn't encompass that the true action and grit that Thor can really deliver upon his opponents. But no, that is not the case here. There was action all the way throughout this and not just it, like it was nice, like hand to hand, like action, like, you know, with weapons and also hand to hand, like some of it remind me of like some of the best choreographed martial arts scenes or martial arts movies. And I love martial arts. So I was like geeking, you know, back and forth, you know, really enjoying it or whatever. Um, there was a brief glimpse of Dr. Strange in this movie. And of course, you already know that I'm not spoiling the movie for you here. Um, that was already in the trailers long, long ago, many, many months to go and i do like the inclusion of there and once uh hella played by kate blanchett showed up i mean like she is in my opinion one of the best villains in the whole mcu or whatever and that's not saying much because all the villains are pretty sorry um to be honest with you in the mcu that is it's a problem in the mcu they don't take their villains seriously or whatever they give all their concentration and focus to the protagonist and not the antagonist and to me that's just a big uh, red cardinal sin or whatever most people would consider loki the best villain in the mcu and you know i'm not going to argue with you there um i do like loki for the most part um i kind of thought he was a whiny baby in avengers part one uh or, or whatever uh but in this you know and but hella she did do her thing or whatever she had a great amount of screen time um the film was able to transition back from the scenes that she was in when she's trying to take over asgard all the way over to uh sakar where we get hulk and the grand master and things like that and uh it's just man it's so much to talk about like i have these notes here uh because i just wanted to make sure that i did not forget about anything but I'll go ahead and say this too. Let's just get, get into the characters or whatever. Of course, we have Thor. Of course, we have Loki. Um, and we have Hemdale. And all those characters did a great job. And even let's talk about Thor for a moment right here. With um, Thor and Thor the Dark World being a disappointment to most audience. Well, I don't want to say that it was a disappointment to, disappointment to me. Um, like the movies, they weren't bad. I just wanted much more. But the movie was really did a great job of giving you a fresh take of Thor with his hair being cut. When I was seeing this in the trailers initially, I was like, man, why y'all cutting Thor's hair? I mean, you know, that's one of the things that makes, you know, Thor Thor. You know what I'm saying? It's not just his hammer. It's his hair. You know, like that's just what I know. Uh, that's just what I know and love about Thor or whatever. But I do like the haircut and the new uh, remix. Um. Uh, I said remix. I was trying to say makeover that they gave Thor. Not only is it a, just a good fresh take of Thor to give us something new so we don't get bored from the past two films, the director and writer were actually able to, you know, give 
um, a good reason to why he had to get his hair cut or whatever. And I really did like that. It, it flowed. It felt natural. It felt organic. And, you know, it's kind of just knocking two birds out with one stone. The next character uh, that I do want to talk about is Hemdale, played by Idris Elba. Uh, he was my favorite and not, not my favorite. I liked him the most in this movie. He was okay in part one. He was barely in part one. He picked up it a little bit and had more screen time in part two. But in, uh, he's still one of the background characters of this movie. But when he was on screen, you know, he was a strong presence or whatever. I, I don't want to get into a fight with him, Dow. Him, Dow can box his ass off. You know, he can swing his sword. He can fight. He can handle his own. And I liked him. There was a, a different, they kind of gave him a little makeover too. You know, and I do like that. The next character that I like is Valkyrie, played by Tessa Thompson she was one of the best in this movie like seriously she was a very formidable uh character very strong female very funny i mean like seriously um they were able to make her funny and it was also made, able to make her like fierce and strong or whatever like somebody that you just don't want to cross i mean i really do love her to death uh tessa thompson on another note i think you are beautiful you know what i'm saying I'm a single guy. I don't know if you married or you got a boyfriend or anything like that, but go ahead, you know, subscribe to my channel. Send me an email. You know what I'm saying? I love to take you out. I'll take you to earth. I'll take you to Asgard. I'll take you wherever you want to go. We could do what you want to do. But no, seriously, uh, Tessa Thompson in, um, in this movie, Thor, I was going to say Thor, the dark world, no Thor Ragnarok. She was one of the best parts in this movie and whatnot. And just really, everybody was great. Everything was great in this movie. I mean, there was really, um, there, there, I have two, um, law, I don't want to say, I don't want to say lowest complaints. I do have two complaints. Uh, one being the first five minutes of the movie. And then the second complaint, uh, I will talk about uh, just a little bit later. Also, like uh, Scourge, played by uh, what's the guy's name? I forgot. Uh, what is his name? Um, Scourge, the Executioner. Um, I do, you know. Of course, he's a prominent player in the in the comics and whatnot. And I'm trying to look this up now because I cannot. Uh, I can't believe that I forgot his name or whatever. But. I like the way he got his name of Scourge, the executioner, Carl Urban or whatever. I can't believe I forgot his name. Um, Carl Urban, the guy that played Dread or whatever that came out, I think that was 2013. And that was a great movie, too. If you haven't seen uh, Dread or whatever, the new one, not Judge Dread with Sylvester Sloan or whatever, uh, not knocking that movie, but uh, uh, Carl Urban, he did a great job as uh, Scourge. There was kind of something. This is this is not a complaint because I said I have two complaints and I'll list the other one in a second. I did kind of have a nitpick with his weapon choice or whatever. He does have the the prominent axe that he has in the comic books and whatnot, so that's great. And uh, he did use it to some degree, but um, I don't want to ruin it for you. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but. There was another little weapon that he, well, not a little weapon, but there was another weapon that he was using that, you know, I was like, okay. I mean, it worked, but, you know, just the origin of that weapon, I just uh, was not really, um, really a fan of that. Now, of course, you guys, you probably want to know how did this guy right here do Hulk? Man. Now, before this movie, I was a little skeptical because, you know, I love Hulk. Pretty much everybody loves Hulk, but there is a good, one. Well, I want to say a gajillion versions of Hulk, but there's multiple versions of Hulk. And one of the versions of Hulk that I'm just not too um, happy with myself and like in the comics and animation movies and things like that and whatnot is the talking Hulk. Um, sometimes he come across as fine. Sometimes he come across as just kind of stupid and he didn't come across stupid in the Well, his character is supposed to come across as stupid, but not stupid bad. I, I mean, stupid good or whatever. But I like talking this. Also, I was kind of skeptical because you know, uh, like it seems like they changed the the image of him a little bit. You know, in the trailers, it's like why does Thor, what not why does Thor, why does Hulk look different or whatever? Why did they change the animation? But when I was watching the movie, I did not notice it that much. You know, it it wasn't anything you know that clocked me out or anything or turned me off or whatever. Uh, you know, they they had a good balance of Hulk in this movie, like him just being Hulk beating the crap out of everybody that comes in, co in contact with them. And they also had a good amount of Bruce Banner, of course. And of course, I'm not spoiling anything. This is all in the trailers. You know that Hulk and Bruce Banner is in the movie. And he was funny, too. He was able to, uh, you know, kick ass and also be funny, too. And, you know, I, I loved all of that. 
Another great thing that the movie uh, Thor Ragnarok did really well is uh, this is loosely. A, well, this is a three part movie collection. I got this a few years ago. Um, we got Iron Man, the Invincible Iron Man, the Doctor Strange animated movie. And this is where I learned about Doctor Strange. But of course, we have uh, the Planet Hulk movie here. Let me open this up or whatever. Uh, just so I'm not showing all the other stuff. But uh, the Planet Hulk movie. Uh, this is a great movie. I, I do really like this a lot. Um, I do recommend you seeing this. It is animated. I think this came out in like 2009 or 2010. I don't, I don't remember exactly when it came out, but that's good. And this movie, Thor Ragnarok, is loosely based on a number of stories of Thor, but of course, the Planet Hulk's um, arc. And they did integrate that very, very, very well in this movie. This is probably one of the better things that they did. I mean, because it just flows so well. I'm very impressed with it as well. There was also some characters uh, in the Planet Hulk and the Planet Hulk movie. Why did I put that back in there? I could have just left it out and, you know, kept showing it to you instead of the box or whatever. But there were two characters in this movie, uh, uh, Planet Hulk or whatnot, that popped up in Thor Ragnarok or whatever. And they did a great job of, of adapting that or whatever. They could have had those two characters fight just a little bit more. Uh, but for the most part, I loved it. Uh, the dog log was great, especially from one of them. Um, I forgot his name. He was, I don't, do I want to tell you? Cause I don't want to, cause it's a surprise. No, I'm not going to tell you because it's no, nowhere in the trailers or whatever. And I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I like that. Both of the characters that was in the planet Hulk, you know, animated movie. Uh, and there was more than one character in the planet Hulk animated movie, of course, but two of the main characters that was helping Hulk out in this movie did pop up and they had prominent roles in this film. And like I said, they were uh, able to integrate that in very well. Another thing that you guys probably want to know is how was the Thor and the Hulk fight? It was amazing. You can relax. It was amazing. I was geeking. Like, I, I am not disappointed with the Thor and the Hulk fight. It, it was great. You know, we had the Grandmaster being played by uh, Jeff Goldblum. And Jeff Goldblum is a fantastic actor. Uh, he was great in this film, too. He was very, very funny. I loved him. He didn't have the completely blue face that we know from the comics and all that good stuff. And I think he uh, normally turned that down just because he wanted to show his face. And I have no problems there with that at all. But I loved his character. He was very funny. Um, the world that, you know, he was the grandmaster over uh, the world of Sakaar or whatever. Uh, was great everything about Sakaar I love it was it was full, filled with so much color and so much design and detail and then the score of the film that, that it was just lovely like a lot of people are it seemed like they're hating trying to compare this movie in ways to uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 I don't get that at all. I mean, I can understand kind of how you would say that in the previews or the trailers or whatever. But when I was watching the movie or whatever, I was like, no, this is his own thing. Like both uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. What are you? I, I just, you know, I like to show my uh, collection in these movies or whatever. But both both of these uh, or whatever. Can you see my face? Um, oh, that's backwards. Both, both of these, you know, like had a, a, a nice rich color to it and whatnot. And people were just kind of saying to themselves like, oh, it's copying off Guardians of the Galaxy. No, even though that the design was the design in Thor Ragnarok was better than it was in Guardians of the Galaxy. Even volume two. Remember in this one right here where uh, they went to the plant ego, the, pl the living planet or whatever. And it was so much color in there. But, you know, there was like a lot even more color. A lot even more. There was a much more color in Thor Ragnarok too, and the score uh, was great as well. Like it was just like this, like back in the past disco, but also futuristic techno disco. I don't even know how to describe it, but I loved it. It, it was it was amazing, and it just really really helped set the tone of this film, and it just made it just a, like a lot of fun or whatever. And, and like I was just enjoying it. Like I mean, you know, I'm I'm just smiling like ear to ear to ear. You know, what I'm saying looking at all the colors and all the designs and all the costumes and all the makeup and just all the music and all the everything. I really did love that a lot. Now. We talked about the action uh, with a uh, Hulk and Thor, and those are not the only two in this movie that beats ass. Everybody in this movie kicks ass. Every single character that swings uh, an attack 
it was doing her thing with, with the ass kicking and I, I loved it all thor loki uh heimdall hella man hold up she is one powerful creature like seriously when she when she popped up in the very beginning of this movie that's when it got good or whatever and then when they showed the first real fight scene with her i was i was like so amazed i was like man hold up i'm i'm like yeah oh yeah like after each blow and kick and block and flip and attack i would it was very well choreographed and i love what the director did with her special abilities and her powers or whatever it was really 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 intriguing and interesting i, I really liked it a lot it, it had a lot of detail it really did remind me of like somewhere of an old school shaw brothers kung fu gung fu um type action or whatever like seriously this thing was like it was uh choreographed by young wo ping or whatever and in my opinion, Young Wo Ping, uh, he's a Chinese do. Oh, he's he's a director, uh, action director, uh, a writer for a lot of kung fu films, even in present day and back in the day or whatever. But it seemed like it was like choreographed by him because it was just so detailed or whatever. Like I really did I like it. And when I'm seeing action, like there was one scene to where I, I don't. This is not a spoiler, but like let's just say a large number of characters were attacking Hella man and hella she just swept through them like it was nothing she just cut through all of them like butter or whatever and some of them were like landing blows on her too so it's not like she was just completely invincible and, and whatnot it, it was it was very uh well put together and thought through and it just spoke violence and i'm just like man hold up if the rest of the fight scenes are like this and this is one of the very first fight scenes towards the very beginning of the movie i'm just saying to myself a majority of the fight scenes like this we are in for a treat and guess what majority of the rest of the fight scenes were just like this so you're in for a treat because i mean like the, i don't i, I keep i keep finna spoil it for you but i don't want to spoil it for you but there were like it was just so many like little fights too just like but you know some people be talking and then they're just boom 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 throw some hands towards each other and block block blah 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 and i'm just like oh snap you know what i'm saying like i'm really loving it like you know it was just dope or whatever and uh you know they did a great job there let's see let's see it's so much i want to talk about so we talked about the director expectations i hated the beginning of the movie dr strange was great i love hella thor and loki valkyrie the comedy like i said it was very very funny now uh do i want, do I want to get into the things that i did not like okay so i did not like the ver the first five minutes of the movie i talked about that something else that i really didn't it, it, it frustrated me is the continuity of this movie with the rest of the mcu um they did not do a good job there in my opinion now this movie is not bad but this movie is supposed to take place i'm assuming and you know when i would check out interviews during the same time as uh oh that's the wrong one captain america uh civil war and i don't know where the sleeve is I, I i was looking for this for like 10 minutes before i i hit play but i mean record but anyway you know of course thor and um thor and hulk were not in captain america civil war or whatever and the last time we we saw them before they was in this movie was uh in at the end of uh avengers age of ultron because right at the very end you know thor held up his hammer more near or whatever and you know he was like hey I, he was talking to uh captain america and iron man and he was like hey i feel like we're you know being played like pawns this doesn't make any sense this is like the third or fourth infinity stone or infinity gem i don't even know why they changed the two infinity stones and in the mcu is it, it, really called infinity gems but whatever but he was like this is not this is just too big of a coincidence i feel like we're being played like pawns all these infinity stones are, are popping up at random all at one time i'm gonna go back to asgard and kind of figure out what happened that's the last time that we see uh thor in the mcu but then the first time that we see thor in thor ragnarok i'm like wait a minute like we last time we saw you popping up in the bifrost so how did you end up here or whatever and they didn't do a good job of explaining that and it was just kind of frustrating to me and that's another thing that ties in with the beginning of the movie another thing is at the end of age of ultron we saw hulk in the quinjet and he was flying off into uh the wilderness or whatever and then black widow came on the little uh, monitor and was just like hey big guy thanks for all your help or whatever um come back now press the button we're trying to track you but you know tony has that stealth mode or whatever and then you know he turns it off but then the next thing you know he's in sakar and they tried to give like a brief line of dialogue or two of how they he got there but 
you know, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it wasn't a good explanation to me. They explained kind of half of it, but that half that I already explained that we already knew. And the, I, as I was watching it, like, because at the very beginning of this movie, I was like, okay, I want them to explain this, this, and this. And they were explaining certain things. Like, okay, I'm glad they explained this. Now the story is making sense. But when it got to that explanation, I was just kind of like, no, you're not explaining that that well. And I don't like that, you know, so please give me a better explanation than this this is kind of a bad writing but it, it, it's not too bad or whatever to where it ruins the whole film no 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 this whole thing is fun so i didn't like the very beginning of the movie i didn't like the first five minutes of it and i didn't like the continuity in between the last times that we saw thor and hulk and age of ultron to come to where uh, we see them in thor ragnarok they could have explained that just a little bit better uh, but you know, these are things that are make that are not making the movie perfect. The last little thing that I, I did not like is I was slightly disappointed with Surtur. Um, Surtur is the giant, uh, fire demon, um, God thing or whatever. And, you know, I was slightly disappointed. Uh, there was one scene in the trailers or whatever that, uh, did show Surtur and when it went in the movie, I was like, oh, that's awesome. But then I was like, oh, that's it. That's all we kind of get or whatever. I'm not saying that he was in the movie for a long amount of time or a short amount of time. I'm not I'm not saying that I'm happy with the amount of time that he was that sort of was in the movie. But I just kind of wanted a little bit more, um, you know, with that character. But besides those little things right there, guys, everything else in the movie is freaking amazing. Like, seriously, if you was wanting to see uh, Thor really get down and to kick some butt, this is the movie for you. Uh, it was nice seeing Thor being vulnerable with not having Mjolnir, but still able to kick butt. Whether he got the hammer back or not, of course, I'm not going to tell you that. You're just going to have to wait and see the movie. And of course, I'm not going to tell you who won between uh, Hulk and Thor. You're just going to have to see the movie. But all the characters were lovely. Uh, I loved them all. Uh, Thor, uh, Serta could have been a lot better. Uh, this Hela is the best villain in the MC. Let me let me look at. Let me see it before I say that. No, because the villains in Captain America: Winter Soldier was pretty dope too. Uh, and I also did like uh, the Vulture in um, and Spider Man: Homecoming. I'm trying to look at all my DVDs because uh, as I'm looking at them, I'm thinking about all the villains and whatnot. Um, yeah. Hella, it, hey, uh, I'm screaming. Hella is one. I'm screaming again. Hella, it doesn't matter. I'm excited. Yeah, Hella is one of the better villains uh, in this movie uh, in the in the whole MCU, and I really am excited about that. Uh, and overall, I'm trying to make sure I didn't leave anything out because I know as soon as I cut, turn the camera off, I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to talk about this. I forgot to talk about that. But the score is great. The action is great. The comedy is great. The characters is great. Uh, other than the first five minutes, Surtur and the continuity, man, this is a fun, fun movie. Now, the hard part. Well, no, before I rate, well, oh, this is easily the best Thor film out of all of the MCU. And do I want to rank this movie now out of the rest of the MCs? No, I got to think about that. Um, it's definitely, what is this? This, this is the top, what is this, the 17th movie? Man, uh, well, it's definitely in the top half. I'll say that. Wait. Let's see here. Let, let me do this real quick. So no, you don't make the cut. You don't make the cut. I don't make the cut. I do like this better than Spider-Man Homecoming. I will say that. Uh, so hold on. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I do like this better than. Okay. What we got here? Okay, I do like it better than. Okay, so. Yeah, I like it better than this movie, too. Let me lay these out right here. Make sure I don't leave nothing out. I like it better than... I like it better than a lot of this. So... All right. Huh, I will say this. Thor Ragnarok is in the top five of the whole MCU. It's better than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 to me. It's better than Volume 1. It's better than Ant-Man. I really like Ant-Man. It's better than Avengers Age of Ultron. It's better than Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor, Hulk, Captain America, the first... Yeah, this is it. Yeah, I would say that it is in the top five. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I'll go... Like, I'm... Yeah. 
Screw that. We we, we here, family. Um, the comic book geeks and people that like my reviews. Uh, the only movies that are competing with Thor Ragnarok is Iron Man 1. That's still a masterpiece. Captain America, Winter Soldier, Captain America, uh, Civil War, and Avengers 1. Uh, and I will go ahead and say, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, yeah, Thor Ragnarok is my fifth favorite out of the whole MCU. Uh, these are the only four movies that, that beat it. Yeah. Ho- yeah, Thor Ragnarok is my uh, fifth favorite out of the whole MCU. Oh, man, if I had to rate it out of one out of ten, I, I have two numbers here, and... Oh, what I want to give it. Let me let me look at these. Uh, this movie, it could have been perfect, but it wasn't. I'm going to give uh, Thor Ragnarok a 9 out of 10. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 because even with, you know, um, though, that other stuff or whatever, it, it was still good. I had a lot of fun with this. I was laughing my ass off, and I'm really impressed with the action. Like, like seriously, my personal taste, I love hand-to-hand action, and they had a great amount of hand-to-hand action and you know, weapon on weapon and this and that or whatever. Um, you know, I, I really did enjoy this film. So I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen Thor Ragnarok or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide past, present, and the future. You can also click the bell and be notified when I do make uploads. And guys, also go to my website. Check me out there. Bookmark it. I do have written reviews. JustMyOpinion.net. 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 Also, guys, look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff. Um, I would really appreciate it. It's right there. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Sorry about that. Laugh if you want to. I don't know what happened. My throat just turned into a freaking desert, and I was about to die. But God, dog. Anyway, (laughs) I messed up my outro, but hey, it is what it is. But guys, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff. I'm so excited. I, I done dehydrated myself. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. I'm, I'm that excited that I, you know, it's right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy for you guys by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again. And please excuse me for taking a drink of the water. I, I had to. I felt like I was about to pass out. My eyes are freaking watering or whatever. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in to my pen slash review of Thor Ragnarok uh, starring Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth uh, Tom Hiddleston, Tessa Thompson, Carl Urban, Kate Winslet, directed by Taika Waititi. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.